Hi, uh, I'm Paul Calabro, and um, this is a picture I shot in Iceland in 80, around 80, I think it was 81. And um, I was there, it was September, and I was with a friend in Reykjavik, and she said she, a grandmother had a farm, and there were horses on the farm, and that no one had attended to them or seen them. And I said, and she, I said, well, how do they live? She said, well, they've been eating the grass, so they could, they're fine like that on their own. But we should go check them because no one was there at the farm. And the farm was all the way on the other side of, of Iceland, in the west coast. So we, she had a Citroën, and we got in the car, and we took off to go to that horse farm. And as we're driving, it was a beautiful weather, the sun was shining, it was about 65 degrees. But Iceland's noted for its very changing weather. It could change from snow to rain to hail all in one day. So we're on our way. We're about halfway across Iceland and a huge snowstorm comes rolling in. Just and we, already we, the cars had diminished. There were hardly any cars on the road in the west part of Iceland. There were only 300,000 people, so there's such a sparse population in the west coast. There's hardly little towns of six, seven people in a town. So um, the snow's piling on us, piling down, getting higher, and we finally have to raise the Citroën. They have little gizmo you could raise up the car six seven inches so we raised it up to go over that snow and we're going along and then we got more snow and finally so much snow we couldn't go we we're hitting the snow we couldn't go any further they got too high so we pulled off and we said what are we going to do here and um we turned the engine off to try and keep the heat we rolled the windows up and put our coats on hats on gloves and we're trying to figure we had no phones at that time cell phones and um so, waiting there, thinking what to do, and um, a tractor trailer comes plowing through. And then they plow through, they slow down, and they, this is a nice landed guy, you know, you, what's going on? He said, well, he'll drive slow, we could follow his tracks to the next, there's a gasoline station, about 20, 30 minutes, a minute, half hour, 40 minutes down the way. So we get on, we follow his, his tracks that he made so we can get through that that, that um, snow banks and we get down to the station and we go there and we get to the place and we do coffee and stuff and he takes off plows through again and then we figure we'll follow him again but he says you know he couldn't drive slow this time because he, he has to make his delivery so we got in the car we're following the tracks we figured we'd have enough to get to the farm hopefully or at least to another station that we could stop in um, so we're on our way, and as we're on our way, we're talking about Iceland and the mythology in Iceland. And a lot of people believe in these little trolls, the little people, and that they create mischief. And there are actually scenes where road workers stop working because they believe the trolls are out, that they're going to cause them havoc. So they won't even work to all leave for days, sometimes a week. It's very funny. Now, my friend is a political activist, so she's a very pragmatic person involved in politics, and this was totally an enigma to her, and totally off her chart of even perception. Me being more of an you know, artistic bent and kind of seeing the, both the humor and the fun in it, sort of found this kind of, and you could feel a kind of energy in Iceland, which is very strange, this kind of, it's like a mystical energy, or comes from the earth. It's a funny feeling. I don't know if it's the starkness, the people, the seclusion, the volcanic land that's all around you with thermal springs and all this very intense feeling that you feel. And people feel it all the time. Especially I climbed up Snæfellsjökull, which is in, also in the west coast. and uh, You feel it right on that mountain climbing up. It's pretty amazing. But anyway, I said, you know, they think there's something to this troll business. I said, these trolls, it's a funny phenomenon. And she's, oh, they can't, there's nothing, no, no such thing as a troll to a troll. I said, well, 
people believe enough people, maybe they create kind of some kind of mental hallucination. And as I'm talking about this, all of a sudden the hood pops up. <laughs> and we go back and they said, oh, the Schultz are here. So, oh, get out. So we get out and I fix the hood and fix the latch, and put that hood back down. And we get going again. And I said, ah, oh, you see, so I'm kidding her about the Trolls. And then I look out and I said, there's one out there. She said, no, I, I saw a little mound, it must have been something, a bird or something in the, in the distance. And as we, I said that, I, I, it's so ironic, the tire pops on the car. I mean, just the weirdest thing. And we go skidding and the wheel pops off and rolls off and it's flat. And we stop, and the car is on an angle. And I said, oh, my God, what are we going to do now? And I said, okay, get your spare. I'll roll this back. I'll, I'll put the spare on, and we'll get on our way. So I don't have a spare. Oh, no. No spare. No way. I had to get it fixed. I didn't, you know, we didn't get it. I didn't think it would even snow on the way out. So, all right. So we're sitting there. We roll up the windows again. We're in the car trying to keep warm. And um, I'm getting a little worried now. So, all of a sudden, I hear a rumbling, a <clears throat> motor coming down at a distance. So I see this pickup truck coming in. Guy jumps out, runs to the tire, picks up the tire, throws it in the back of his truck, and takes off. Me being a New Yorker, said, Oh, God, we've been ripped off <laughs> in Iceland by <laughs> some crazy guy. And I kind of knew. She looked at me, and I said, Yeah, I, I realize we, this is Iceland. So they don't do that kind of thing there. So in any event, we waited, and then about 15, 20 minutes later, the guy comes rolling back. The tire is repaired. He puts it on the car, and he says, come with us. Come with me. So we go with him. We go to this, the farmer. We go to this house. This farmhouse is right here on the, on the left. We take a shower, and he gives us delicious uh, fish and warm coffee. He was a fantastic guy. And this is Icelandic hospitality. And so I a really good shot here. And I was very intrigued by these Pollock-esque ropes. These were the lines, actually, the metal lines that pull the boats in at dry dock in the, in the fall um, when they want to clean the bottoms. So I thought that made a kind of interesting introduction into the picture. And I liked the idea that the red boat was in the foreground, very strong, and that brought your eye to the other boat, which was also red, but more subdued, and the sun was on the other side, so that kind of balanced the photo, and this sort of kept this in this little golden section, but I needed something else right here, and these two crows were coming, I heard them caw, and I had two cameras on me at the time, I used to carry one with negative film and one with um, Kodachrome, so I like the colors and printing of Kodachrome, and, I, and also good for reproduction. And I liked the negative film because the negative could pick up more of a nuance within the stops, picked up more information. So I had my two cameras, and when the birds came, I shot my first one with the Kodachrome, click right above that mass, and the second two birds came flying there, I clicked that, boom, with the, with the negative. And sure enough, I got the shot just perfect. Nothing burnt out. And you know, very interesting. And uh, when I printed, I was very happy. And um, I have that picture here, and I made it into an offset um, lithograph. And I only have a limited amount. Um, and I'm very happy with that. Now, we were going over this little fjord to the farm. We still hadn't reached our destination. But now the weather was better, but the snow was still up on that. He said, you couldn't drive over. So we said, we'll leave the car, we'll go over, and then we'll come back when, when they clear the road so we can take the car back. So in order to get over to check the horses, he said his friend had a um, snow machine that had a, you know, could fit six, six, eight people in it, and it was enclosed and heat, and it had big tractor, metal tractor rims around it that could go through anything pretty much. So I hired that, I paid the guy to take me over the mountain to the farm. And as we went up the, the glacier here, going up, 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 over the snow. Snow was very high up there by now. I mean, four or five feet, six feet of snow, seven feet. It was amazing. And the, the snow machine just plowed through this thing on top. And as we're going, I'm looking out. 
and I saw in the distance, because now there was really no, it was sunny, it was beautiful, but there was a lot of snow, and I saw this rising up of snow, almost like a, like a, an animal was pushing the snow up, and I said to the driver, what's that? And um, we looked out, and of course my friend said, troll snow, he said, no, no, troll snow. So, um, he said, no, has something in there. Is it a bird? And we looked out. And so we got out of the, uh, the, the, the snow machine and we walk over and said, we heard, we saw this thumping, heard a thumping sound. So what the heck? And we said, that, and, we, and then as the thumping came up, we saw the snow and it was like a box. He said, that's a car. So we grabbed the shovel, we started shoveling. And we're shoveling and shoveling and shoveling and shoveling. And finally got the window down and the guys there, <laughs> his lips were all blue. Two people in the car, the lips are blue. We got him out. Bought them in the thing, heated them up, and we attached the snow machine. We pulled that uh, jeep. It was a jeep out of, the, out, of the, out of the snow, and we brought them to the town. And then we all celebrated that night um, in, a, in, a, in a dance hall in, in that little town, the next town that the farm was in. And then we had gone to the farm to check on the horses. Now this is the farmhouse here, which we went to, and this is our. You know, most of these farms are on the water. So this was a water farm, and these were the horses that were left out, and they fend for themselves in the winter. They just dig in the snow, and they um, they forage for the grass under the snow. And the other animals usually die if they're not taking care of the cows and the sheep because they, they don't know how to forage under the snow. The horses actually are probably, I guess, smarter, uh, more you know, more um, able to survive. So this stallion here, he looked at me, he was like, oh, this is my, this is my herd here, what's going on? And we took a little time to get them calmed down a bit because they were so used to being out there in the wild. And uh, we went in the farmhouse, and this is uh, a photo that I just made a few copies of. That's all I have. I don't even know if I have the negatives anymore. I have to look and see for this one. So I, this is a limited piece. That's for sure, very limited to a few. And this one of of course I had more of and um, they're both available so um, I hope you enjoy this and um, we'll look forward to seeing you again